such thing as depression in my life. Amen? Amen? There would be no such thing as lack in any area of my life because I would have a revelation that God loves me. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, as I get ready to get started, I was thinking about my original message entitled, The Fairs of the Devil. I'm <laughs> It's a joke. <laughs> I thought it was funny. And a good brother of mine wanted me to minister on... Uh, you know, wives, how the wives need to straighten up. And uh, he didn't want me to mention her name, so. <laughs> Mark's claiming it too. <laughs> now you know why he's Mark the perfect man or also Mark of the beast, depending on what. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to talk to you about what, what really, really, really blesses me. I, I, couldn't I couldn't decide whether to call this message EPA. Then you would have thought it would have been Environmental Protection Agency. Well, really, it was effortless presence activated. Or I was, I was thinking about, uh, you know, I had, I had another title. There's, there's so many titles, but I, I'm just going to call it the threefold chord of praise. And as I start out, I want to say this. I'm going to use praise, thanksgiving, and worship synonymously. I'm going to use them interchangeably because I know... Don't come there's all different Hebrew words for praise and lift your hands and twirl around and spin on your head and break dance and moonwalk and all that other stuff. I know I, I'm aware of that. But sometimes I think we get bogged down in being complex in the sense that it's just about your heart and the Lord. And I gotta say something too about praise and thanking and worshiping God. God doesn't have an ego. Amen. It's not like God saying, Praise me. And my ego, I got low self-esteem. No, that's not God. <clears throat> when we praise Him and we worship Him and we glorify Him, well, let me back up. Last week I said something that's so powerful. Everything's been provided by grace. Jesus did it all, amen? It's a finished work. And we talked last week about how faith is the hand that takes what God has already supplied by grace. Remember that? So faith <clears throat> is not inactivity. Faith is spirit-directed activity. Hear the difference? <clears throat> I say that because a lot of people got this mindset. I'm going to get a drink of water here. <clears throat> a lot of people have this mindset that uh, <clears throat> faith is inactive, and it's not. Faith is active, but it's Holy Spirit-directed activity. <clears throat> now, with that said, praise, thanksgiving, and worship is the voice of faith. Did you know that? Praise, thanksgiving, and worship are the voice of faith. Before I go any further, <clears throat> excuse me, man, I got that fair dust in my throat. <clears> throat> now you know why it's of the devil. <clears throat> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <clears throat> but in order to be a true praiser, you need a revelation that it's not about your love for God. It's about his love for you. Amen? See, and, and how do you get that revelation? Anybody know? The Word, okay, the Word, that's true. But we all have the Word in the sense that we've all got a, a written Word, the Bible, right? We all know Jesus is the living Word. <clears throat> but how do I get that Word to function in my life? You begin to meditate on it. My wife has something that she calls lazy brain. And I determined in my heart, no more lazy brain. Amen? And you can find out that whatever you're doing, the Scriptures that God is speaking to you, and I, I challenge you to take praise and worship scriptures and meditate on them. Therefore, you're good. You know that? Do you know the Bible says that in His presence, Psalm 1611, is fullness of joy? At His right hand are pleasures forevermore. Do you know that His presence is with you? It abides with you. It doesn't come in and come out. But you know that there's a lot of Christians that don't experience peace and joy and they experience depression and they all operate like mere unchanged men and women? Amen? Amen. So even though God's provided everything by grace, we got to take these things by faith. But the first thing I want to say to you is that all this comes, we need a revelation of God's love for us. And, we, and what that means is just simply taking God at his word. Here's what Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 3. Watch this, beginning with verse 14. <clears throat> that fair dust will work loose, just hang with me. Ephesians chapter four, 3, verse 14, watch this. This is what Paul prayed. This is what I challenge you to pray for yourself. <clears throat> Verses 1. Uh, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. 
of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. That he would grant you. This is what he, Paul said he prayed. Grant us according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit. Watch this in the inner man. The Holy Spirit in your born again spirit in the inner man. And when it says that you might be strengthened, are you ready for this? It means to be invigorated. It means to be filled with energy. It means to be filled with excitement. It means to be filled with joy. But yet many Christians, they're born again. They're going to heaven. They do love God. But they don't experience this. You can tell what a person really believes by what comes out their mouth. Amen. Amen. But how do we change that? See, you've got to decide, number one, we've got to decide this. I need to change. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> I need to change all the time. It's called growth. See, you know what I get so excited about? I, was, I, I jog. See, I tell you I jog because I don't jog that much, so you think I'm a big jogger. <laughs> but I did get to jog yesterday and the day before. <clears throat> and I put in an Andrew Womack CD, <clears throat> and he was uh, talking about how uh, he was at this place, and he was saying, he's saying, man, I'm so excited. The word's so unfolding to me, man. I'm seeing so much stuff. And the guy looked at him and said, you say that every year. And I thought to myself, man, that is me. That is me. And I'm excited about that because I'm seeing in the word Jesus. I mean, it's opening up to me more and more. But it's not doing that without my cooperation. And it won't do that without your cooperation. God, see, God loves everybody. Jesus died for the sins of the whole world, but multitudes don't receive it. Jesus gave you joy, peace, healing, blessing, everything. It's available to you, but you got to take it by faith. And when you take it by faith, you express it through praise and thanksgiving. Praise, thanksgiving, and worship is the voice of faith. <clears throat> People murmur and complain and do this and do that. And then they say, but I'm believing God. They're not believing God. <laughs> it's like a rock. <clears throat> we say in the name of Jesus like a lucky rabbit's foot sometimes. All right. That he would grant you, <clears throat> according to the riches of his glory, to be invigorated, strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Who wants that? All true life flows from the inside out. <clears throat> Next verse. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The Greek says that Jesus might finally settle down and feel completely at home in your heart. Woo! That Jesus might finally settle down and feel completely at home in your heart. <clears throat> Amen. You know what makes him feel like completely at home? When we agree with His Word, when we agree with God is good, no matter what it looks like. Amen. And we begin to express it. Amen. God is good. But I thought if God's good, then why are you dealing with this? I'm in a broken world, but I know God is good. Why was David such a man after God's own heart? Do you ever wonder that? He's an old covenant dude. He doesn't have what you and I have. He doesn't have a new nature. He doesn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongues. He doesn't have any of that. But yet he was a man after God's own heart. Why? I've been meditating on that. Because no matter what it looked like, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 34 verse 1. Now watch this. You know what was going on when that occurred? David was freaking out and fleeing from Saul. A demented king. Imagine if your president and his army was after you. Just you. Think about it. And they're coming to get you. Some of you think that, but it's not true. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Think about it. Imagine if he was after you. And David said, I will bless the Lord. He, got, he runs to a, a priest named Ahimelech in Nob. And, and he gets the sword of Goliath. That, uh, you know, he said, man, I'm on a, on a mission. It was so fast. I had to get away from Saul. He takes the sword of Goliath. And then he runs to Achish, the king of Gath, where Goliath was from. And then he departs and goes to the cave of Adullam. And all who were discontented and disgruntled and distressed and in death, they joined themselves to David. And David said this, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble, the afflicted, the meek shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me if you're murmuring you are diminishing God in your life 
You are allowing the destroyer to come in. But if you will praise him, no matter what it looks like, if you'll lift your voice, if you'll declare God is good, that's the hand. That's faith. That takes what grace is already supplied. Amen. Oh, this is good news. Wait till you see some of these verses we're going to get to. My, 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 my. Oh, anyhow, that Christ might finally settle down and feel completely at home in your hearts. Amos chapter 3, verse 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can my soul walk with where my spirit's at in Christ unless I agree with what God says about where my spirit's at, raised up and seated together with Him in heavenly places in Christ? No. And a house divided. Hebrews 3, 6 says, You're the house of God. Mark chapter 3, Jesus said, A house divided cannot stand. And if I will not operate with who I am in the Spirit, and I will begin to murmur and complain according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, um, those who murmur were destroyed of the destroyer. We open the door. And we don't have to. <laughs> you know God's Word never fails. It can't fail. If you begin to declare it and stand on it, no matter what it looks like, it'll never fail. Isn't that powerful? But we declare it and then the situation gets worse and we think this and that. Well, then we, here comes the unbelief. And we just throw away everything. My word, we need to lift our voice. We need to praise Him. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Why shout? Because it's intensity. Sometimes you've got to blow the carbon out. The carbon of the unbelief and dust of this world, you've got to blow that out, man. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Wigglesworth used to say, no one can doubt who learns to shout. That Christ might finally settle down and feel completely at home in your hearts. That you being rooted... Rooted and grounded in love. God's love for you. Here in His love, 1 John 4.10. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the satisfaction, the propitiation for our sins. Past, present, and future. That's good news. Man, that makes me want to praise the Lord. <laughs> that you being rooted and grounded in love, His love for you. Next verse may be able to comprehend, may be able to comprehend with all the saints. Watch this. What is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height? The multifaceted love of God. <laughs> he, next verse. Watch this. To, and then to know the love of Christ with passes knowledge. Now watch this. When it talks about knowing, this is talking about intimacy. It says it passes finite human knowledge. It takes a revelation to comprehend the love of God. But let me tell you how it comes. You've got to start thinking about it. You've got to start occupying your mind with that instead of what the world's saying. Yes, you've got a part in this, grace people. Amen? It doesn't happen independent of your will. You're going to have to fight for this. Not to earn it, but to enter into what's already been earned. Let me give you a type from the Old Testament. Numbers chapter 13. God gave the children of Israel the promised land. Amen? He said, I give it to you, but you're going to have to drive out some inhabitants. You're going to have to drive out some old mindsets. You're going to have to drive out some old ways of thinking. How do you do that? By trying to drive it out or by focusing on the light? By focusing on what Jesus said. Amen. Watch this. It's going to get so good. To know the love of Christ, which passes finite human knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. If we really understood the fullness of, of God's love for us, we would be filled with all the fullness of God in a, what we talk, the way we think, and the way we walk. Amen. Amen. We got Christians. Oh, they're depressed. They're going through this again. They're going through it. I'm not trying to make light of that. We all go through things. But I'm telling you, God is good. Look at this. I'll just give it to you. In Psalm, well, no, go there. Come, we'll come right back to this. Psalm 13, verse 6. Watch this. Another Psalm of David. A man after God's own heart. I told the Lord, I said, let me be a 21st century man after your own heart. The only difference is a new covenant man with a new nature and the Holy Ghost. Wow. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Now we sing that, we look at that and we think... Well, so what? You know the first four, ver this is the last verse in this psalm. You know the first four verses, there's all kinds of negative stuff happening until you get to the fifth and sixth verse. 
And I looked up one commentary, and this once again is believed to be when David was fleeing from Saul. He had a demented king. I mean, the whole government's after him. I'm thinking, pick on somebody your own size. <laughs> Amen? And, he, and this is what he says. I will sing. I will sing unto the Lord. Why? Because he has not gonna, he has dealt bountifully with me. When you believe he's done it, you'll see it. Amen. Glory to God. But this is where our brains, see we think, well I am meditating on the word of God. <laughs> Watch this. Psalm 113 verse 3. Watch this. And then Psalm 44 verse 8. I just want you to see. Well, I do that on Sundays and sometimes during the week, but most of the time I'm whining and complaining and I'm focusing on how bad it is. Now, God loves you. God loves you. But listen, that, where your brain goes, that's how your emotions are. That's right. That's right. <laughs> From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Psalm 44, verse 8, In God we boast all the day long, and praise thy name forever. Hebrews 13, 15, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. You need any more? Well, I, I do that. See, we're, 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 I, I believe so many times we live in a compartmentalized world. See, and when we're compartmentalized, we have compartmentalized results. <laughs> Faith is the hand that takes what grace has already suppl been supplied by grace. And faith, faith, the voice of faith is praise and thanksgiving and worship. Psalm, or Romans chapter 4, verse 17. And then we're going to come, <laughs> man, you're good. <laughs> Romans 4, verse, watch this. As it is written, this is God talking about Abraham. I have made thee a father of many nations before him who believe, even God, who quickeneth the dead. He calls those things that are not as though they are. Next verse. Who against hope, natural hope. Who against hope, natural hope. Who against hope, natural hope. Who against hope, natural hope, believed in hope. The confident, joyful expectation of good. The promise. Next verse. That he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Next verse. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Now, he didn't deny his own body. He just didn't consider it. <clears throat> ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> he didn't deny his own body. He just didn't consider it. His focus was not on that. The fight, the fight of faith is the fight for your focus. Write that down. The fight of faith is the fight for your focus. The enemy wants you to focus on everything but him. Praise isn't because God's got an ego. It's for you. <laughs> Amen. Watch this. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead when he was about 100 years old. Pretty old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He, he didn't consider it. That wasn't his focus. Hebrews eleven fifteen 15 said, if their mind would have been full of these things, they would have had opportunity to return from the place they came. Now watch this. One more verse. This is so good. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Stop. How do we stagger at the promise of God through unbelief? We fail to do what Abraham did. And yes, I use the word do. It's not a cuss word. See, there's a tremendous perversion going on with the grace message. That's what Satan does every time. He says, oh, it's all grace. So it don't matter how you live. Come on. It does matter how you live but not to earn anything from God. It's already been done. But if you don't appropriate what God has done, it'll just be like the inheritance in the bank and it'll do you no good. Now watch this. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. How was he strong in faith? 
And you know, God gave him some signs. He didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and Paul's writings. He didn't have that. He said, listen, I'm going to give you something to look at, something to consider beside the deadness of Sarah's womb and your physical age. I'm going to show you something. At nighttime, the stars of heaven. During the day, the sands of the sea. Consider that. Focus on that. Stagger not at the promise. And he didn't. And he gave glory to God. You read about Abraham. He failed. Did you know that? He lied twice about his wife that we have on record. Not to mention, him and Sarah tried to help God out. And they had an Ishmael. <laughs> How many times do we try to help God out and have an Ishmael? But you know, in spite of all that, David messed up big time. Right? If you are a lover of Jesus, a praiser, and you look at his righteousness, and you focus on what he did, and you rejoice, no matter how much of a crumb ball the enemy tries to make you feel like, you rejoice because it's about what Jesus has done, I promise you, God's hand is working mightily in your life. Because it's not about you and what you're doing, it's about him and what he's doing. Amen. Or done. That's a better way to say it. Now back to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. I'm just, I got to get moving here. Because it's going to get so good. So good. So good. Ephesians chapter 3. Now unto him. Say now unto him. Based on what I've already said. Now unto him who, who is able to do. Who is able to do. Exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. But it's according to the power that works in us. To him, him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Now unto him. It's connected to what he's saying. A revelation of God's love for you. Now, if faith is the hand that takes what's already been supplied by grace, and thanksgiving and praise and worship are, are, is the voice that gives voice to the faith that takes what's already been supplied by grace. Do you got that? Now, I'm going to give you some. Now, go, go to uh, Psalm 71, verse da, 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 14. This is so good. I mean, I'm just like, wow. Wow, 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 wow. I got, oh, I got some of these scriptures. There's so many. Remember we talked against hope, Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Abraham, who against hope, believed in hope. God's hope is a confident, joyful expectation of good. We abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost, Romans 15, 13. The psalmist says, but I will hope continually. My hope is in God. He says, I believe it's in Psalm chapter 42. Why are you so downcast, O my soul? Put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. See, when your hope is in how do you do that? You open your golden mouth and praise the Lord. I'm going to get to the threefold thing here. I am going to get to that by faith. All right. But I will hope continually. How often should I keep my hope in the Lord? Once in a while? How about on Sunday? How about on Sunday and Thursday? Or Wednesday? All the time. And will yet praise thee more and more. When my hope is in God, there's a corresponding action of more and more praising God. And how do you pray? Oh, this is so good. Praising God. I, I got to say this. We say this all the time. It says in Psalm chapter 56, verse 4 and verse 10, that I will praise his word. Jesus is the word. I'm not talking about ink on paper. But I'm saying the very spirit behind the word of God behind, is all about Jesus. So when you get these revelations, you're seeing Jesus. But see, you, there's such a deception. People think, well, yes, I believe that. But watch where you're putting your butt. Amen. That's the problem. There's no buts. None. God is good. Period. And if I believe that, it ought to come out of my mouth. And if it never comes out of my mouth, I don't believe it. Amen. Man, I love it. Golly, I love it. I love the joy unspeakable and full of glory. I love finding what I look for all of my life and living there, not just visiting. Christ is finally settling down and feeling completely at home in my heart because I'm declaring He's good no matter what it looks like. Oh, that, that sounds like works. That's, not, that's a work of faith, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. You're not redeemed from works. You're redeemed from dead works, legalistic works. You're, you're ordained to good works. There's such a misunderstanding. Satan uses half-truths and makes whole lies. It's what he does. It's what he does. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. Next verse. My mouth 
shall show forth my greatness. No, my mouth shall show forth your righteousness and your salvation all the day long. You know who the salvation is? Yeshua, Jesus. For I know not the numbers thereof. In other words, it's more than I can even number. God's goodness is more than you can even number. And God's goodness towards you is more than you can even fathom. Amen. <laughs> I tell people this. God's plans for you are better than your plans for yourself. The reason we hold on to our plans is because we don't really believe that. <laughs> Come on. This is good news. We're challenging you. Come up hither. Next verse. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. Whew, I like that. I will make mention of my righteousness. No, thy righteousness, even of thine only. Now jump down to verses 23 and 24, the last two verses in this chapter. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee, and my soul which thou hast redeemed. This is an old covenant, dude. How much more you and I? Have a better covenant based upon better promises, Hebrews 8, 6. Well, look at this next verse. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness when it's convenient. You know one of the reasons I love Andrew Womack so much? He was talking on one of these old CDs I was listening to, and he said, people say, man, you even talk about Jesus at PTA meetings. That's right, because I'm a fanatic. I can't help it. It's a fire shut up in my bones. I can't help it. I'll preach to a display at the fair if I have to. I'm so excited. It's not, this isn't a show. It's ongoing. And it's ongoing for all of us. God doesn't love one person above another. He loves us all. We're in Christ. But we need a personal revelation of that. And we need to take that personal revelation and begin to thank Him and begin to praise Him and begin to glorify Him. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded, for they, they are brought to shame that seek my hurt. Do you know there's things like diseases and stuff that seek your hurt? Do you know there's things like lack that seeks your hurt? Look at Psalm 18, verse 3. Whew, watch this. Psalm 18, verse 3. I will call upon the Lord. See, we think our confession, our speaking of the word, is just declaring, by his stripes I'm healed, by his stripes I'm healed, by his stripes I'm healed. Beep. I'm a robot, by his stripes I'm healed. No, confession is praising God, declaring his goodness. Praise you, Lord God. By your stripes, I'm healed. I thank you. God says, I, I will sing praise of the Lord because he has not gone. He's already dealt bountifully with me. And if I believe he's done it, I'll see him do it. <laughs> Woo! I feel good. <laughs> I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Sickness is your enemy. Lack is your enemy. People talk bad about you. They're your enemy. I mean, we love the people, but what's working in them is trying to get in your head. Wow. Wow. So let me, let me just run a few verses here. Psalm chapter 34, verse 1. We'll start with King James and we'll... Slip to the Amplified. I want to get to the threefold chord. Don't let me forget. The threefold chord of worship. The threefold chord of, threefold chord of praise. The threefold chord of thanksgiving. There's a, I believe the Lord showed me there's a threefold chord. What is it? I'll show it to you. Don't let me forget. I will bless the Lord at all times. How do you do that? By His praise continually be in my mouth. Declaring that God is good. Even when it looks bad. See, if, I, if I'm just looking at, well, bleh, you know, it's... It, you know, it's looking bad now. I was praising the Lord, and, and now all of a sudden this is happening. Listen, this is for your good, not God's ego. Amen? Next verse. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble or the afflicted shall hear thereof and be glad. Next verse. I told you this is when David was fleeing from Saul. Things were falling apart. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. How do you magnify God? I've said this before. You don't magnify God to God. You magnify God in your experience. Okay, I'm going to do my praise time, Chris. Ah, oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, I'm done. Now back to murmuring. It's not what he's talking about. This is a lifestyle. This is something that gets in you. It's who you are. Stay until the word. How does Linda say it? Stay until the word until it becomes who you are. Oh, magnify the Lord. Magnify. Make Him bigger in your experience with me. 
Let us exalt his name together. I'm, I'm going to hurry here. I sought the Lord. Well, we could camp here. We could camp here. The Lord only rewards those who diligently seek him. But I said the prayer. I got born again. I did that thing. He only rewards the diligent seeker. It's called faith. Faith takes what's already been supplied by grace. Another lie that Satan's been perpetrating. Trying to inactivate the body of Christ. Because if God's just doing it independent of my free will, even after I'm safe, then I shouldn't have any problem in the world. Then this, this church should just be, you know, this building just kind of just happened. You know, it just kind of, you know, big bang and the molecules came together and there it was. That's what some people think. That's a lie. Once again, rest is not inactivity. Rest is Holy Spirit directed activity. Rest is not rest from work. It's rest in work. Amen. Next verse. Well, I'll leave that up there. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. How many got fears going on? Don't raise your hand. We all do. Perfect love. His love casts out fears. But it doesn't come unless I seek him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I thought I already have him. Yes, you do. But you've got to seek to know him. Seek to know him. Well, this is good stuff. We're, we're popping the balloon on a lot of the lies that are being perpetrated and being called grace. I'm a grace guy. I believe in that. But I'll tell you, I've never been more disciplined in all my life. Not because I have to, because I want to. It's who I am. I'm driven, baby, in a good way. I'm no longer condemned. I used to walk around and feel like I wasn't measuring up. I, I'm getting freer and freer of that all the time. And it isn't based on what... I, I'm, I'm actually talking about his righteousness now, not mine. And that his righteousness has been given to Chrissy John as a free gift. I really don't want to go by Chrissy, but Jen calls me that. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. Next verse. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. The Bible says if we believe on him, we'll not be confounded or put to shame. You know what that means? You'll not be disappointed in what you're believing for. That's our God. The reason people don't go all the way in is they're not fully convinced that that's true. See, why was David such a man after God's own heart? Because no matter what it looked like, no matter how much he messed up, no matter what he did wrong, he, he just knew that I'm going to keep my focus on Jesus. See, we need to res uh, resist condemnation like, more than anything. Because condemnation is telling you that you're not who God says you are. That you haven't received the free gift of, of righteousness and grace. And they looked at him, were light, and their faces were not ashamed. Next verse. I'm trying to hurry. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. In other words, David recognized that in and of himself he had nothing, that in his flesh dwelled no good thing. He recognized that without Christ he was nothing. He recognized that he didn't have any ability outside of the Lord. You know, we need to still keep recognizing that. Now, I'm all about praising the Lord and, and rejoicing in what God has made us, but if we're not careful, we'll be praising ourselves instead of praising Him. Can you hear the difference? We praise Him. We rejoice in who He's made us. And we're thankful for that. But we praise Him. Okay, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. You know what? This idea that man, once you get saved, bless God, you don't have a bit of problem. The same psalm says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. In this world, Jesus said, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Why? Because I've overcome the world. Just because you have a trip. I know people, man, they have something goes a little bit wrong. And where, where are they at? They haven't seen him at church. Well, you know, I had somebody look at me wrong again. And, and it happened. And it's been happening on a consistent basis. Or, 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 or here, you know, it's not happening or manifesting the way I thought. Listen, God's good. <laughs> I love my wife based on the fact that I love her and we're married. Not based on her perfection. And she is perfect, but that's beside the point. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't need that ride, Scott. <laughs> all right. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Next verse. This is going to get... Some, the angel of the Lord. Now watch this. Encampeth round about them that fear him and delivers them. Watch this. Go to the Amplified Bible. See, we think fear of the Lord is the dread of the Lord. It's not. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, who revere and worship him with all. And each of them he delivers. But in fact, let me show you this. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13, King James. I'm going to just quick show you this and we'll come right back to Psalm 34. 
I'm trying to hurry. I'm trying to get a lot in in a very short time. <laughs> Watch this. This is the, under the law. Say under the law. From the King James, please. I, I, I like it better. Uh, say, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. It's also in Deuteronomy 10, 20, but I just want to give you this. Now, when Jesus quoted this, when he was being tempted of the devil, look how he quoted it in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Watch this. Jesus quoting this verse. Jesus is quoting this verse from the law. In, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, Then saith Jesus unto him, Satan, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. Where at? Deuteronomy 6, 13 and Deuteronomy 10, 20. It is written. Now look how Jesus quotes it. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. You see that? You know what the reverential and worshipful fear of the Lord is? It's worship. It's glorifying him. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now back to do, uh, Psalm chapter 34, verse 7 from the Amplified, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Watch this. Oh, it gets gooder. Oh, we're just getting going here, man. <laughs> this gets so good. <laughs> Watch this. But know that the Lord has set apart. No, I'm sorry, that's good too. But uh, uh, verse 7 of Psalm 34. That's good too, though. I love that. 34 and verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, who revere and worship him with all, and each of them he delivers. You know what he's saying? When you worship the Lord, you're inviting the angels that you already have to encamp around you. Well, yeah, but you know, it's, it is based on God. But let me show you this. We'll come right back here from the King James, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I mentioned it earlier. We'll just start with about verse... 10. We'll just do a 10. The whole thing's good. He's talking about the children of Israel in the Old Testament. Watch this. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured. He's talking to new covenant believers, and he's illustrating it from the Old Testament. Notice what he's saying. Don't murmur, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Next verse. Next verse. Look at this. Look at this. You have a part here. Now all these things happened unto them, for our examples. <laughs> whoa! Whoa! And they're written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Isn't that amazing? I call murmuring praise to the devil. Murmuring is complaining and whining and all those types of things. You know why people gossip? Because they don't praise. <laughs> Give me the virtuous woman. Song, or Proverbs 31, verse 27. I'm going to look at it from the Amplified Bible because I want to show you something. My subject isn't the virtuous woman, but it's talking about her. And it says something really good in the Amplified. Now, sh she looks well to how things go in her household. And the bread of idleness, and the stop. Well, I'm a busy person. We're not talking about an external busyness. We're talking about what's going on on the inside. Amen? The bread of idleness. The Bible says, I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. What's that have to do with your heart? And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall of protection was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep. Sleeping to what? Who I am in Christ. The righteousness of God. A little slumber. A little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth and thy want as an armed man. Proverbs 24, verses 30 to 34. The field has to do with your heart. Proverbs 18, verse 9. He that is slothful in his work, not my work, his work, is brother to him that is a great waster. That's why Paul said in 2 Corinthians 6, 1, I beseech you, don't receive the grace of God in vain. This stuff will change your life. You'll outwork everybody, but it won't be you. It'll be the grace of God given to you. She looks well to the ways of her household and, and the bread of idleness, which is, what is it? It's gossip. It's discontent. And it's self-pity. People feed on these things. I've counseled some people. They don't want help. I thought they did. <laughs> they just want to tell you how bad it is. They just want to share their feelings. Feelings. <laughs> Nothing more than... <laughs> Amen? There's a place... To, you know, share what's going on. But then it's time to move into the Word of God and let the Word of God change you. Well, right. back to Psalm 34. Well, we could camp on that verse 7 from the Amplified. It gets so, so good. 
This is so good. Psalm 34, verse 7 from the Amplified. From the Amplified. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear, revere, and worship him with all, and each of them he delivers. Next verse. Oh, taste. Oh, taste. You're going to have to taste. I can't taste for you. Creflo Dollar can't taste for you. Joseph Prince can't taste for you. Andrew Womack can't taste for you. You've got to taste. You've got to taste. Amen. Then guess what happens? You see. What do you see? That the Lord is good. It's no longer a theory. We say God is good. Yeah, God is good to, to some other people. But me? We see when we taste that God is good. Watch this. Our God is good, blessed, happy, fortunate. To be envied is the man who trusts and takes refuge in him. Next verse. Oh, this is good. Oh, fear the Lord, you saints. Revere and worship him. For there is no want, there's no lack to those who truly revere and worship him with godly fear. There's no lack. Nothing. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. Nada. Nothing. Zippo. You think, well, it just looks like circumstances come to get your focus off of him. And if you start siding with the circumstances, just like Peter when he walked on the water, you begin to sink. You keep your focus on Jesus. How? By faith. What does faith do? It staggers not at the promise through unbelief. It stays strong in faith by glorifying the Lord, by meditating on what God said, not what your boss said, but what God said. Hallelujah. Man, this is exciting. Let me give you some other verses. Are you ready? Psalm 25, Amplified. Stay with Amplified, please. Uh, we'll start with verse 9. I'm just going to show you some of the promises that are yours. Say they're mine. Okay, I'm going to take them. Amen. All right. How are you going to take them? You're going to open your golden mouth and begin to declare God is good and keep declaring it. Begin praising the Lord. I'm telling you, it wells up in me sometimes so strong that I want to walk around. I just, glory to God. This is so exciting. He leads the humble in what is right, and the humble he teaches his way. Next verse. Remember the fear of the Lord is to worship. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and steadfast love. Even truth and faithfulness are they for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Now, we keep his covenant because we keep our faith in the one who kept the covenant. That's how we keep it. His name is Jesus. He kept it perfectly. I watch this. Keep going. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity and my guilt, for they are great. Remember, this is an old covenant guy. Who is the man who reverently fears and worships the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he should choose. <laughs> I love it. See, some people think, well, we're, we're not under the law, so then we're just lawless. No, we're under a law. It's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. We're not under a written code. We're under the law of the Spirit. In other words, what's replaced the external law is the promptings of the Holy Ghost as He prompts the Word in you. He wants to direct you and correct you, but if you're unteachable, He can't. We're not lawless. <laughs> Amen. We're under the perfect, complete law of liberty. The Holy Spirit is to lead and guide us and protect us. Now, keep going. It says, Him shall He teach in the way that He should choose. How many want to go in the way that you should choose? The right way. I, okay, I say amen. Uh, he Himself shall dwell at ease. I'm liking it. <laughs> He'll dwell at ease. Watch this. And his offspring shall inherit the land. I'm liking it yet. How about you? These are promises. The secret. Mm, 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 mm. The secret. The secret. That means it's not out there for everyone to see. See, God hides things from the half-hearted. Did you know that? Yeah. These things aren't hidden from us. They're hidden for us. I mean, God respects a person's will. If they don't want him, he'll honor that. Did you know that? Well, it's quiet today. The secret of the sweet, satisfying companionship of the Lord. Have they, have they, who fear, revere, and worship him. The secret of the sweet, satisfying companionship of the Lord is only to those, watch this, who revere and worship him. And he will show them his covenant and reveal to them its deep inner meaning. My, my, my. Woo! Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26. And then I'm going to give you the threefold cord with two seconds left. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 14. In the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. 
and his children shall always have a place of refuge. Always. Always. But here again, these are only for people who respond to the love of God by worshiping Him and glorifying Him and lifting their voice instead of murmuring. See, there, one of two things is going to consistently come out of your mouth. You're going to be griping and complaining and talking how bad it is or you're going to be talking about how good He is and thanking Him for how good He is. Scripture says in Proverbs chapter, or Romans chapter 1, verses 21 and, and 22, Howbeit when they knew God, People knew God. They didn't glorify Him as God. Neither were thankful. They became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise. Oh, this is just common sense. They became fools or morons in the Greek and their foolish heart was darkened. Wow. In the reverent worship of fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. God's not going to leave you hang. Are, are you operating in faith that says it's already been provided by grace? Then what's your mouth declaring? Are you blessing the Lord at all times or only when it looks good? Are you blessing the Lord at all times? You know, I love what Andrew said on that tape. He says, we sing these songs about when, when we all get to heaven, what a, what a place that'll be. And then the doctor tells us that we're going there and we fall apart like a $2 suitcase. <laughs> you can't lose, baby. You can't. In the reverent worshipful fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence and my children shall always have a place of refuge. You can tell the pulse of your faith by what's coming out your mouth. Amen. See, folks say, oh, we just deny when things are bad. We don't deny when things are bad. We just declare that there's something gooder than the bad. Next verse. Reverent, worshipful fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may avoid the snares of death. That's a promise. Now, we're going to close with this. And I'm not going to go there. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, we'll go to uh, um, Ephesians chapter 5. And we'll begin with verse... I'm deciding on verse 15 or 16. 15. We'll just do 15. I'm going to have to hurry. But Ephesians chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12 talks about a threefold cord not being quickly broken. And I realize it's talking about under the S-U-N, under the sun, and it's talking about people, but I think there's a principle. The Lord showed me this this week. He said there's a threefold cord in praise and worship. And he said, I'm going to show it to you. And usually I Greek things or Hebrew things and do that, but I felt led not to do that because he said, maybe I will in the future, but he said, this is what it is. And I said, oh, I like this. Now watch it. Ready? But this is, I want to go from the, um, oh, this is so good. Go, go to the King James for the sake of time. So see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Now the word circumspectly, years ago I heard a Greek scholar share, it has to do with balance. It has to do with a right balance. Amen? We, we said there's a balance between grace and faith. Grace is everything's been provided by God. Faith doesn't earn. That's where people have twisted faith. Faith simply receives what's already been provided by grace. Amen? And praise is the language that acknowledges that it's already been provided by grace. When I say praise, I'm saying thanksgiving. I'm saying all these things. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.16, Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Commune with God without ceasing. In everything. Somebody say, in everything. Yeah. Not for everything. Some things we resist, but in everything. Give thanks, for that's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The next verse says, verse 19, quench not the Spirit. Do you know when we murmur and complain, we quench the Spirit? <coughs> yeah, I don't know about that, brother. Uh, stop comparing yourselves among other people, among other Christians. Start comparing yourself to what God says. Why was David a man after God's own heart? And the Bible talks about the key of David, Revelation 3, 7, Isaiah 22, 22. Jack Van Impey ain't got nothing on me. He doesn't. I got the new covenant. Pray that he gets it. Currently he doesn't. He needs it. Love you, Jack. And Rex <laughs> See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So believers, he's believers. They can walk as fools. What is a fool? Proverbs 28, 26 says anybody that trusts in their own heart is a fool. I didn't say it. God said it. Oh, well, I, I got you, brother. I said, don't, call, don't, don't say Rick or don't call any man a fool. That's not what that's talking about. It's talking about an empty-headed fool who has no hope of being born again. That's what that's talking about. That's a completely different subject. But when I trust in my own heart, I'm operating like a fool. That's what it's saying. All right, now watch. Next verse. 
redeeming the time because the days are evil, making the most, buying up every opportunity. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. It's important that we're not unwise, but we understand what the will of the Lord is. Amen? Amen. Next verse. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. The word excess means unsavedness. Operating like someone you're not. That's what that word means. So it says, be not drunk with wine. And I've talked about this before. There's a natural wine and alcoholic beverages. Anything that takes you out of your, your, scent, your, your, your mental faculties. But I believe there's also a spiritual wine. The wine of Babylon. And all nations have been made drunk with the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That's another subject. But it says, be not, that's religious deception. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now stop. He's going to tell you and I, born again believers, how to be filled with the Spirit. I don't know about you, but that's good. The word being filled with the Spirit is the present tense, which means continuously. It's in the passive voice, which means you've got to receive it. You don't earn it. You don't merit it. You simply receive it. Got it? And it's in the imperative mood, which means it is imperative. It is a mandate. It is something you desperately need. It literally says, be being filled constantly with the Spirit. Next verse. Now, wait a minute. Whoa, stop. I thought I already had the Spirit. I'm born again. You do in your spirit. But how many know your three parts? Spirit, soul, and body. How many know that your spirit right now, if you're born again, is doing flip-flops? It's rejoicing. It's excited. But your emotions may be depressed. You may be whining. You may be physically. You may be doing all this stuff. Uh, your spirit's rejoicing. Did you know that? Amen. So he tells me to be filled with the Holy Spirit who lives in my born-again spirit to have that come out into my soulish realm and into my physical being. How do I do that? Speaking to yourselves, watch this, in three things. Everybody say three things. Three. Psalms. Say psalms. psalms. Hymns. Yes. And spiritual songs. Now stop. What are psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs? I felt like the Lord said, it's so simple. This is why the Lord told me, go to the psalms. Meditate on the psalms. Meditate on the psalms. They're in First Chronicles, and, but primarily the psalms. So I've been doing that. Out of Here's another word I used to think was a cuss word. Ooh, obedience. <laughs> See, I used to think that because I had heard it perverted. I would heard people say, you just be obedient. You don't have any questions. And you just, you know, check your brain out and you just be obedient. That's what I thought. That was wrong. The promptings of the Holy Spirit. See, that's grace. Now watch this. Speaking to yourselves in Psalms. Go to the Psalms and meditate on them. And hymns. What are hymns? Oh, I know the hymn book. Well, it can be that. It's just songs of praise that other people have come up with or you come up with yourself. You may make up songs that you walk and say, Ah, glory, Jesus. You know what I mean? You may do whatever. It doesn't matter if you can sing. It's beautiful to God. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. Go to the Psalms. Meditate on the Psalms. Hymns are things God will give you. And what are spiritual songs? In the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Spirit. Praying in other tongues. Let me show it to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Watch this. Verse 13. I'm just going to show it to you. It's not politically correct, but it is biblically correct. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret in a congregation. It also applies individually. You can do that. Watch this. Verse 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Next verse. What is the conclusion? What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will sing with the Spirit or with the understanding. Pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Next verse. Watch this. This is what I'm after. Else when you bless with the Spirit in heavenly language, how shall he that occupies the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks? He doesn't even understand what you're saying. In other words, if you bless with your Spirit and when other people are around, they don't get it. <coughs> Watch the next verse. Watch the next verse. For you verily give thanks well. <laughs> but the other's not edified. All he's saying is if you're around other people, don't give thanks in other tongues because they don't understand what you're saying. But you can give thanks well in other tongues. It's called spiritual songs. Back to Ephesians 5. That's good stuff. You give thanks well, but the other's not edified. First, uh, what did I say? Uh, where was we at? Ephesians 5. About verse, where was we at? 19, 20, 21, somewhere in there. 19, I think. Speaking to yourselves in Psalms, go to the Psalms. Hymns, Psalms you come up with or other people come up with. 
spiritual songs in the spirit, singing and making melody in your heart. This has got to be a heart reality. We were talking at the Bible study and it was so good. And we were talking about the debate in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. And people say, well, do you have to confess your sins? Or what if you miss one and all that stuff? I love what Terry Ann said. She said, this is not a formula. Do I need to say I'm sorry to my wife or not? I don't know. <laughs> if I feel I need to, I'm going to. Amen. See, we're so formalistic because we've been so religious. This is a relationship. Yes, amen. God will tell you. My favorite answer when people ask me what to do is, I don't know. But I know someone who does. Amen. And I'll help you look to him. Look at that. Psalms, the Psalms, hymns, songs that other people have come up, whether yourself or someone else, spiritual songs in the spirit, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Next verse. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's not saying you give thanks for car wrecks or cancer. He resists those things. That's why he said you need to understand what the will of the Lord is before you even start this. How do you understand what the will of the Lord is? The Word of God. All right. One more verse. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. All right, now watch this. I'm going to read one story and then we will close. Are you ready? This is from a, a book by Don Gossett. He says, I, I recall... I recall a childhood incident, incident. He's talking about vocal praise. A childhood incident which illustrates this point. During the Depression, our family was often embarrassed by many things. But then almost everybody was poor, so the embarrassment was bearable. But I remember that my dad finally got an electrician's job in Enid, Oklahoma. So we moved there thinking our circumstances might soon improve. However, it wasn't long until he lost the job and we were compelled to move back to our old home. The trip had to be made by bus and dad had only enough money to buy tickets for my mother, my sister, and me. My little brother was able to go free. But how will you get home? Mother asked anxiously. I'll hitchhike, dad replied. It won't take long. So he took us to the Enid bus station where we went, were to wait until our bus arrived. My dad, however, left on foot for the edge of Enid carrying his heavy electrician's gear. About an hour later, we boarded the bus for our journey home. When we arrived at the outskirts of Enid, on the main highway leading out of the city, I suddenly spotted my dad standing beside the highway hitchhiking. When I saw him, I sprang from my seat and exclaimed, That's my daddy! My mother was, almost, was most embarrassed by my excitement because she felt badly that my dad had to hitchhike home while we rode the bus. But I was proud to see my dad. And I said it again, that's my daddy! As the bus rolled past where he was standing, everyone on that bus knew that was my father. And probably everyone knew that why he was hitchhiking. But I didn't care. I was too young to realize how embarrassing this was to my mother. I only knew that I loved my daddy and I was mighty proud. That he had paid the ride, price for my ride home. Glory! Praise Do you realize what Jesus has done and how much he loves you? He's wild about you. I was driving home the other day and I looked up at the moon and I said, My word, Lord, you did that for me. He did it for me. I believe that. I'm believing it more and more. And the more I believe it, the more I receive what's a done deal. That's my father. That's your father. And he loves you. Amen. Are you blessed? Let's just praise Him. Let's lift your hand. Just tell Him in your own words how much you love Him. He loves you. He loves you. He's wild about you. Father, we thank you. Oh, oh, the Bible says, make the voice of His praise to be heard. Make the voice of His praise to be heard. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Make His praise glorious. We thank you, Lord. We glorify and we praise you. Hallelujah. The more you stay full from the inside, you can't help it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to do the sacrifice thing and just say, you know what? I don't feel like it. Oh, shut up, feelings. My spirit man's doing flip-flops. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. 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 If you're not born again, if you've never said yes to Jesus, I'm going to give you that opportunity. Just say, dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me. I receive your forgiveness. I believe in my heart that you died for my sins and that God raised you from the dead on the third day. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. And now as we dismiss, if there's anybody here that wants prayer for any type of healing, we want to pray about that. Or if you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, 
That's available to you. I'm going to let people fellowship because that's important. You can fellowship at church just like you can fellowship at the fair. I'm <laughs> You know, I, I got to tell you, I got to confess and come clean. I've been fighting the fair. You know, I'm, I'm from Shelby County originally, and, you know, I've been, you know, doing everything I can to blaspheme the fair and all that stuff. But it's getting so bad. I mean, I'm serious. I'm out of control. I was even at the fair on Wednesday night before it even started. <laughs> Somebody help me. I need help. <laughs> Praise the Lord anyhow. Amen. I actually like the fair. I just act like I don't. So, <laughs> Amen. I want everyone to stretch your hands towards Emerson, our brother. In Jesus' name, we release the...